Welcome back to our Prison Break campaign. I'm Liam, and we are playing <clears throat> Four Against Darkness. In the last episode, our party defeated the final boss on the third level, the third and final level of a prison compound. They began with only a lantern, no armor, no weapons, and using only found items. Against all odds, they defeated three floors of obstacles, enemies, and bosses. So they step over the body of a Chaos Lord, the final, final boss, and climb the stairs and throw open the door and step out onto the battered shores of Life Tooth Rock. They feel the wind on their faces again in who knows how long, and the salt spray from the sea. One narrow path leads down to a misshapen dock, and at the dock, a rowboat and a man. The man holds his cloak tight and a lantern aloft. He beckons and points to a frigate anchored offshore. There's nowhere else to go, so the party makes their way to the dock. So far, we've been using just the core rules and, uh, and a homebrew campaign plot uh, by Pedro Correa that I found on the Board Game Geeks forums. So with the Escape the Dungeon plot done, I've had a read-through of greedy gifts of the guild masters. Uh, this book provides uh, about a dozen different patrons uh, your party can uh, work for or be sponsored by or uh, earn faction with and unlock their secrets and they have special rules and so on. And I was going to roll randomly to see who this frigate belongs to, who can who contrived to have a lantern and a key fall into the laps of our party way back on level one. But while I was reading, I came across this. One of the secrets you can unlock with one of the particular uh, patrons is the alchemist. Brunhilde's business relations are always willing to help. Once per adventure, you may encounter a wandering alchemist. In an empty room or location, parties, uh, you know, I don't have this. So the idea is, <clears throat> if you reach a certain level of uh, reputation with this Brunhilde, uh, wandering alchemists can appear. And that is exactly what happened on, uh, I think it was level two. Um, it seemed odd at the time, but uh, so I guess this explains it. So I think on the frigate, or this frigate belongs to... Uh, Brunhilde, I'm going to attempt to say this, De Vigna Marcia, De Vigna Marcia, Brunhilde, De Vigna Marcia. So her family, the De Vigna Marcias, on this fleet of ships, she's a merchant patron. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. What else is there to say about Brunhilde? She's got, all the patrons have some special rules. So I'm going to ignore these. <laughs> Buying perfect cheese, rolling on the bourbon table, does something. Um, recipes and uh, lizard men soldiers. I don't own any of the supplements that make this really mean anything. Uh, in the same way, the way you gain favor with the factions. Each each patron has a different means of gaining favor. There's a list here. <clears throat> um, you can complete a patron's quest. We'll look at those in a minute. The rest of these I don't own or have not been published yet. Uh, jungle, this, uh, this Jungle Queen. Um, JJJ stands for, one of those words is jungle. Uh, P, 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 Defeat the Fetid Flesh, one of those is Pirates. I don't think either of those has been uh, published yet. I don't own RRR. Maneater, I, do, I did buy, but <clears throat> it's meant for um, two adventures that sort of run separately or multiple players, so that's not going to work for me. So we're left with Complete a Patron's Quest. The Patron's Quest is here. Choose either Bring Me That or bring me ingredients. Um, I do bring me ingredients is from 
the courtship of the flower demons. I do own that, but there's a lot of rules there. Uh, I bought that when I was really interested in uh, crafting and harvesting, and I don't think I'm ready to pull in all of that just yet. So we're going to stick with the Bring Me That quest from the core rulebook. So our central conceit here, if you will, is that the, oh boy, the De Vigna, Vigna Marcias, the De Vigna Marcias have infiltrated this prison compound that we just escaped from. I don't think they own or operate it, but they have plants or moles inside and they create opportunities for escape. And then uh, the people who survive owe their freedom to the family, of course. It's a way for the family to retain mercenaries, re recruit and retain them, essentially. But instead of paying the mercenaries, the mercenaries instead owe a debt to the family. So it's this brilliant little con that these guys have going. How much debt? I have no idea. So I figure we'll roll 2d6 multiplied by a thousand. I haven't played enough for Against Darkness to know if that's not enough or too little, but that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to roll two dice, six multiplied by a thousand. So our debt is 6,000 gold pieces. 6,000 gold pieces. So they've got to earn that, earn that, uh, uh, pay off that debt before they're uh, free to go their way. Um, let's see. If that turns out to be too much, maybe we'll reduce it by fixed amounts as we gain favor. Uh, I think there's five level levels of uh, reputation you can earn, and you unlock different features as you earn that favor. Brunhilda, just to be clear, is not on this ship. We won't meet her for a while. We're dealing with just her representative. She doesn't, you know, deign to uh, mingle with the riffraff. Mingle with the help, <laughs> so to speak. Um, so the party, our party came out of the prison with a fair amount of loot. That last boss was guarding a thousand gold pieces. So uh, they used 300 of it to complete the quest with the lady in white. But then I figure there's a quartermaster on this ship who's happy to take their gold and whatnot and outfit our party. So I've done that. And uh, so let's show these here. These cards, um, these are not from the core game. This is a, these are, there's an artist. I think his name is Clint Johnson. I found these on Drive Through RPG. I'll put a link in the description. But the cards themselves have a blank portrait, and then I used AI to generate some uh, portraits. Uh, I wanted some sketches. They're not, they're a little too good, I think. <laughs> but we'll look at these here. So uh, they're called Artistic Character Sheet for Four Against Darkness, and then I just pasted in, in some imaging software. Uh, some portraits and printed these out, and then I laminated them so I can right on them with uh, with these dry erase markers. So who do we have here? This is our cleric. We hadn't named these folks because uh, I was sure they weren't going to survive. So <laughs> the last few episodes, we've just been calling them cleric, barbarian, warrior, and elf. Um, but now we have names. So our cleric, of course, is Elric because you can't spell cleric without Elric. He's level two. Uh, we gave him, he had, he found some heavy armor. I gave him a shield and a one-handed hammer and a sling. I bought everybody some healing potion, a healing potion and a holy water. Uh, he's got the ability to bless and heal. Some notes about his abilities. Um, so that's Elric. Throck, our barbarian. Because Throck seemed like a good name for a barbarian. Um, we gave him some light armor, a bow, and a two-handed hammer. He had that sword he was happy about but the lady in white enchanted it and uh and now he doesn't want anything to do with it he had been de-leveled by that chaos lord so he's down to level one i think everybody had reached about level three 
Um, but that Chaos Lord knocks some folks down. So the Cleric is level 2. Throck, Barbarian, is level 1. Here's our Elf, Blesk, which I believe, according to Google Translate, is, uh, is Slovakian for Lightning Bolt. Um, and that's the spells that she has prepared. Gave her a sword and some light armor, a bow. She had found uh, actually a teleport ring in addition to the escape scroll. Uh, and some notes about her ability. She's also level 2. And our warrior, Jim. Because <laughs> the face reminds me of a guy I knew named Jim. So uh, it's Jim the warrior. He actually is level 3. So he's got that two-handed enchanted sword. I gave him some heavy armor and a bow. <clears throat> I also found some fool's gold along the way. Um, again, healing potion and some holy water. So that's our that's our party. Put them back over here. This is the marching order. So Jim's uh, last in case they get attacked from behind. And then the elf, and then the barbarian, and the cleric are in front. When they're in a when they're in a wider hallway. Uh, the cleric and the barbarian are in front, warrior and the elf are in the back. These are uh, an official product of Ganesha Games. These are called printable dungeoneers. So I also printed these out for fun. Um, there's the cleric. Uh, you can find these on drive or uh, one of one of the one bookshelf sites. I'll put links in the in the. Um, description for these there's our elf there's like 1200 options in this one pdf for all all the different uh, characters from the core game depending on what kind of weapons you want to have equipped what kind of armor and uh and then there's pdfs for the supplements that add different characters and such so um they're pretty neat printing them out this is just card stock we cut out and then uh, it comes with some floor tiles, so you pick one of those, and I just, you're supposed to glue it, the glue wasn't working, so I stapled it, and then I bent them back pretty far so you can see them on camera here, but those work. Um, okay, so I think we're all set up. We've got our party equipped. After they spent all their money, they had about 299 gold left, so they'll apply that to their debt here. So that'd be 557. <clears throat> so right off the bat, <clears throat> excuse me, we've reduced our debt to 5,701 <clears throat> gold pieces. Okay. So the ship sails and the party's escorted to the site of their first job. Um, we're going to do a bring me that quest. So pull up the core rules again here. And we'll go to the very end where the tables are. <clears throat> Quick reference tables. And, oh, this is Greedy Guildmasters. Here's, here's what I want. This is the core rules. And here is the list of quests. Um, and here is the Bring Me That quest. So, there we go. Roll on the magic items table to determine what the object is. Every time the party kills a boss, there's a 1 in 6 chance that he will have that object in addition to his treasure, if any. To complete the quest, the party must bring the object in the room where the quest started. So, <clears throat> the rules here, I'll write this down. Boss, 1 in 6 to have item. I think I might, <clears throat> we'll see how this goes. Uh, there's a chance here we could do multiple dungeons and not find the thing. I think the idea here is that Brunhilde, the Divigna Marcias, have some information. They know that whatever item she's after is in this place where we're headed. And so if we don't find it by the final boss, uh, we'll, ju we'll probably just say, that we'll go ahead and say the final boss has it. So, We'll find it at some point in here. Uh, this gives us a chance maybe to find it early. So we will see about that. Um, I'm also going to, because I've, I've played about five games or so at the core rules, 
when things do get, start to get a little bit repetitive you see the same uh, minions and vermin uh, uh, over and over um, and it's not bad but there are a set of supplements um, these twisted supplements so there's twisted hordes twisted dungeons twisted minions and twisted final fights and they all just change up how um, how things go down what abilities the final fight what the final boss has what abilities the minions have uh, they give a little bit of a theme or something going on with the dungeon itself and then twisted hordes is just a, a bunch of more a, a lot more um, magic and unusual treasure so the idea here is that if you you're playing the core rules and you get to a point where you're supposed to roll for a, a magic item or an epic reward you can come here to twisted hordes so let's do this we're gonna roll are these numbered yeah we're gonna roll on this twisted horde table to see uh, what what the divigna marcias are after what does brunhilda want from this place so the 100 we got a 60 60 all the way down here cat's eye amulet um the character wearing oh boy that's a weird there we go the character we're wearing this amulet gains perfect night vision and may adventure without the need of a torch or a lantern if the character carries a lantern or a similar light source it will be partially blinded if the lantern is carried by another character no penalty will apply okay so that's uh, that's what uh, Brunhilde is after. That's what we want to find in this place. Our goal is the cat's eye amulet. It just gives us a little favor flavor for this uh, for this dungeon. Okay, so we arrive at our place. Let's uh. Let's roll on the Twisted Dungeons and see if anything special is going on here. They want us to roll two, um, two D8s. So there's our first, 67. A few drinks too many. Page 26, 67. A few drinks too many, oh no. Um, select a random character, all right. So we'll just go down the marching order. We'll force him to die here. Three. Uh, it's going to be Blesk. So Blesk, our elf, um, has had a few drinks too many before leaving for the adventure. The character will be unsteady on his or her feet. Will waste an action every time she rolls a one on defense or attack roll. If the, char uh, if the character rolls a one on any save, the character also falls down and hurts hurts her head losing one life so save okay so better write this down we'll waste an action so the thing about rolling a one on defense or attack is normally a fail anyway and that's basically a wasted action so they did, maybe they mean it costs you two you have two uh you miss that and you waste the next action the effects of alcohol will disappear and the character will sober up as soon as one of the following happens. The character takes three or more damage in a single encounter or from a single source of damage. A blessing or healing spell is cast on the drunk character. Another party member, animal companion, or hireling dies. Okay. I think we'll just leave that highlight. That's not too bad. Uh, but okay. Blesk is drunk. All right. There's our dungeon. The other thing I want to do, this is fun. This book, GM's Miscellany Dungeon Dressing, has a fun uh, dungeon naming section. So I've used online generators in the past, and those can be hit or miss. This one too can be hit or miss, but basically what we're going to do, we're going to roll on this table to see the format of our dungeon name, and then we'll roll for specific... Um, words the type of complex some descriptors maybe a proper name so we'll go through here i'm going to roll an eight-sided die this guy eight 
the descriptor complex. We're going to roll a descriptor. It's a D100. Uh, 69 burning boiling seething immolating or smoking so we'll get to choose um, choose from those words and what type of place is it another 100 uh, 85 scar okay we are entering the let's call it I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm inclined seething scar or smoking scar. Let's go with seething, the seething scar. The burning scar. We'll go with seething, the seething scar. All right. So that's our dungeon. The seething. That's where we're headed. I've just got an alert that my hard drive is running out of space. So I think we'll stop here for now. Our party is uh, is entering the Seething Scar, looking for the Cat's Eye Amulet, for Brunhilde, Devigna Marcia, and Blesk, unfortunately.